Hello everyone, it's me, Aurus Sanchez. I'm back here. How's everyone doing? From Molina. How can I be less shy around people? So, that's a, that's a very, believe it or not, it's a very common question that I've been asked pre, a, a lot of times. So here's the thing. If you're introverted, because that's what basically, if you're shy, then you're just an introvert. You know, you're shy around people. It's hard for you to open up, to communicate, because you don't want to, you feel like you don't want to be judged or rejected and, and, and so forth. Am I on the am I on the path on the same path, Molina? Let me know if I'm on that same path. That sometimes you might feel that that you might feel like rejected, and you might be scared of opening up to other people. It's just a scary thing. But if you want to be less shy around people, there's a lot of things that you can do. But first of all, I'm gonna tell you this: Don't try to change who you are. If you are naturally a shy person, yes, you can work on it. Work on it so you can decrease your shyness. But have in mind that to completely eradicate it, it's either going to be extremely hard or impossible. But you know something? You don't need to completely eradicate your shyness. You don't need to. There's so many pros, so many good things about being a shy person. Usually people who are very shy are also very observant. I'm not saying every single one of them, but they're very observant and they, they know what to look for, what not to look. They're listening carefully to what other people are saying so then you can have an idea what's happening. But I'm going to say you definitely want to read, pick up on knowledge on people who are extroverted. Read books on people who are ex extremely good communicators, good communicators, great leaders uh, who have who have uh, the art and science. Like they're very good at opening up conversations, you know, continuing conversations and stuff like that, right? You want to learn from these people, either books, seminars, or even people that you know in real life who are just good at this. Go hang out with them. See what they're doing. But then the hard part is this. Then you actually have to do what you're learning. Because what's the point of learning all this information, but then at the end of the day, nothing happens. Nothing really changes. It's that simple. And also, you, you need to ask yourself, why are you being so shy? A lot of times people are shy due to an insecurity. Why, why are you so shy? Are you scared that everyone's going to make fun of you? Are you scared that people are not going to take you seriously? Are you scared? Are you shy because you might think that people, they're not really going to want to listen to what you have to say? Really, you have to ask yourself, why am I so shy? What am I scared of? And really come into terms, mindset-wise, and, and to yourself that if you are always scared of that, and you let yourself get, and you let your that fear control you, you're always going to be controlled, and you're never going to have control over yourself. And a lot of things you want to accomplish or do, you're never going to do it, and you're going to suffer because of that. You're going to suffer because you have a goal, but you're never going to reach your goal. It's very sad. So if you can do a little bit of all this together, I'm telling you, your shyness will decrease. But then again, there's some good things about being shy. So don't always, um, don't try to eradicate everything. Have, have a good balance. Hopefully I, Molina, let me know if I answered your question. Um, question, is it possible to stand out too much? Um, yes, it is possible that you're standing out too much. But then you need to ask yourself, is that your purpose? Like, do you want to stand out a lot? A lot of people who are performers or artists, right? They want to stand out a lot because they want to get people's attention. They want to be on stage. They want to get a record deal. They want to get followers. They want to be different from everyone else. Maybe you want to show off, right? Um, you need to really ask yourself, why are you trying to stand out so much? Chuck Lynn, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please send me guys your questions about communication, public speaking, anything in the world of communication. Send me your question. I'm here to answer you. So going back. So it is possible to stand out too much. If that's your purpose and you have a specific goal, all right, great. Then continue it then, right? But sometimes we stand out too much. Maybe that's not our intention. And then people are seeing you like conceited. They're not liking you. They're like, what's wrong with this guy? I hate him. I don't like this person. And you might see that a lot of people are starting to have, are starting to have a lot of negativity towards you. And if you see this, you feel this, then maybe you want to tone it down a bit. But then again, it's all about what is your purpose and what is your goal. And if your purpose is to achieve something or to gain, gain some type of awareness, then continue doing it your way. If you're getting that attention, right, the right way, then phenomenal. Keep it going. Of course, you want it to be good attention, not bad attention. You, you don't want to be accused of something, right? That expression that um, good publicity, bad publicity is awesome. No, 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 no. You don't want bad publicity. You only want good publicity. That's it. How can I stop procrastination? So 
everyone procrastinates. Every single person is, is going to be lazy or you have a goal in mind, but it's going to take you longer to do it. That's normal. Don't worry about it. But you literally need to go into your head or go into your mindset and ask yourself, is this something I truly want to do? Because there's times where you think you really want to do something, but then you realize it's just a dream. You really don't want to put in the work. It's that simple. Once you re realize that you either really want it or you don't want it, right? Once you realize which one, which one is the one you really want or you don't want, then you actually have to find a way, you know, around your time. You, you need to be extremely good with time management. I'm getting better and better at it. I'm not the best at it, but I'm getting, I'm getting better at it, right? To try to at least little by little get to my goal. Because guess what? If you keep procrastinating, time is going to fly. And then you say, wow, I wasted a whole year that I could have at least gone halfway or at least finished my goal or have finished uh, writing that book or starting my YouTube channel. But because you procrastinated, you wasted some time. I constantly am telling myself this. Listen, Aurus, you got to do this. You got to do this. this. These are your goals. You, you know that you want to do it. If you keep procrastinating, even though it might feel good in the beginning to procrastinate because you're lazy and all you do, all, all you want to do is watch movies, it might feel good in the beginning, but you want to go get there. You want to get to your goal. But if you don't do it, you won't accomplish, you won't be successful. And I'm always telling myself this. I'm not traumatizing myself, no. I'm just reminding myself constantly. So you need to do that to yourself. Remind yourself what you want. Is it truly what you want? And then just try, try to find a way to get there. Hopefully I was able to answer your question. All right, okay, next question. How can I fix a broken friendship? Because by something I don't know I did and still don't know. Okay, basically, how can you fix a broken friendship? Isad, I got you, okay. So this is what you have to do. So a lot of times friendships break either because you did something, right? Someone else did something. Um, it could be a, a, a tons of reasons why there's a broken friendship. The only best way to do it is to be completely honest. Go up to the person. You need to speak from the heart. Don't be disrespectful. Say, listen, I've noticed that we've been further apart and we used to be so close. We used to hang out more. We used to converse more. And I'm starting to notice that there's some coldness. There's some coldness. There's some bad vibes, bad juju, whatever you want to call it between us. And I really, I, I don't like it. I, I miss what we had in the past. Is there something that I did, right? Why does this work, this approach work? Because even though not necessarily, it may, may not be your fault, right? According to you, right? But maybe from that other person's perspective, it is your fault. But if you come to a grub and say, listen, what's wrong with you? Why did we stop talking? They're going to get defensive. They might get offended. And it's harder to fix that friendship. But if you put yourself in a very humble position, lower position, and say, listen, what is it that I did wrong? You might realize that maybe it's something just, maybe it's something small that you did bother them. Maybe it's really them, but they, they are taking it on you. But if you come with a very humble approach, like, listen, what did I do? Did I mess up on something? Did I say something? Did I do something to you? How, how can we fix this? I miss what we had. You're coming from this approach. It's much easier for the other, other person's ego. I know, I know. I know you probably don't want to hear this. Like, really? I have to feed their ego or I have to be put myself on a, on a lesser step or I have to go one level down below them? Yes. But at the end of the day, later on, you are going to be the bigger person and they will realize this mentally. They might admit it later on or maybe they'll never admit it but they'll know it. So you, you need to put yourself in a more humble position. Be completely honest. Put yourself in a more humble position, lower than them, and approach them and say, listen, did I mess up? What is it that I did? And during the conversation, you can find out what was really bothering them, what happened. Maybe it had, no, maybe it had nothing to do with you. And you could suggest something, suggest a compromise, or just suggest a... What's the word? Suggest a solution so then you both can come back and be friends. But always have in mind that many times when a friendship is broken, many times it, it, it's never the same. It's just never, ever the same. It's just that simple. Hopefully you understand. So hopefully I was able to answer your question. Uh, Sig Signy Chanel by Carrie. How are you? Thanks so much for joining. I appreciate it. What if I did and they're still avoiding me? So if they're still avoiding you, try this once or twice. But then listen, if you were truly honest and you put yourself in a lesser step and you will put, you approach at a very humble position and still nothing, then you need to leave it alone. Leave them to be. Most likely, either they'll come and approach you later on when they're ready 
or it's just not going to happen. Or maybe it has something to do with their maturity or something that's happening to them mentally or in their heart. They're just not ready to do it or it's just time to end the friendship and continue on. Life is very sad and things like this happen all the time. Hopefully I was able to answer your question, Isaar. Okay, cool. Next question. The interdisciplinary chemist, thank you so much for your question. How to build a relationship with highly successful entrepreneurs or simply people you admire? Okay, so love this question. I love this question. How can you build a relationship with highly successful entrepreneurs or people you admire online or in person? So the way I've been doing this, so there's a couple of different ways, different uh, unique approaches that I'm going to give to you. Hopefully this can really help you. Find the people you admire on LinkedIn. And on LinkedIn, they have a, a, a thing where you can connect with them. Either send them a follow. So you should send them a follow. You should follow them. And also send them a private message. I would try to go more with a voice recording. A lot of people, you can actually send them voice recordings on LinkedIn and say how much you admire them. Mention specific works or books that you read from them that you really love and or like. Or maybe videos or articles that they've posted. And then try to intrigue them maybe if you have a podcast invite them to your podcast so you can interview them maybe if you're trying to write a book say listen i want to um interview you for like 20 minutes online or in person and i want to add you to my book i want to have a skype call with you and, and record it so i can post it online or try to intrigue them find them on linkedin intrigue them with something or another way that you can do this go on fiverr.com try to find someone who can help you with influencer marketing Tell them what niche you, you're in. Tell them specific people that you're interested in getting and getting um and getting their emails and just getting to them, right? A lot of these people will actually give you, will find you their emails or places where you can reach them. They'll tell you exactly how to approach them. It's like they're consulting you how to get to them, how to intrigue them from Fiverr.com. Now it's a little pricey, it's about two hundred to three hundred dollars, where they find like about two hundred influencers in your niche entrepreneurs or people in your niche that you probably will admire you can tell them their names and they'll consult you ways on you how you can approach them these are some two simple ways that i'm doing right now that i'm actually doing to approach people to get them to my podcast get them to put things in my books so it's very exciting so hopefully i was able to answer your question let me know moriel how are you moriel Thank you for your answer. Do you have any other ideas for building relationships personally? Okay, so I already answered online. So personally, how can you do this personally? Great question. So let's say you find these entrepreneurs or people that you really admire in person, right? Either at a meetup or you just found them on the streets or you, you found a way to connect with them, right? You have to understand to get their attention is going to take you a while. And to build something with them is going to take a while because a lot of people who are successful entrepreneurs or people who are just successful in your niche or, or in your industry, everyone wants their attention. Everybody wants their attention. Everybody. And a lot of people, and they know that a lot of people want to use them for awareness, maybe money, opportunities, investing, so many things. They know that people are going to want to use them. So you need to find a way to show them that you really don't want to use them. You legitimately just want to build a relationship, be their friends. So you need to have, you need to give more than what they give you. So, and you need to have, well, it's what I learned a while back, have a 51, 49% relationship where you're giving 51%. Maybe you're all, maybe you're taking them out to go eat and learning from them. Maybe you want them to mentor you, right? But what can you give them a value? Is it maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe is it some type of money, some type of opportunity that they're trying to explore, maybe more engagement, more uh, uh, maybe some prizes, so many things. You, you, you have to get creative. I don't know who you're speaking about personally, so you have to get creative on how you can intrigue them, give them more than what they're giving you, and show them that you're just trying to build a relationship with them, right? But it needs to be a mix of them because if you're just trying to show that you're trying to be friends with them, 98 percent of the, t of the chances they might like you but they probably won't have time to you know have a relationship with you because they're just so busy doing what they have to do so you need to intrigue them personally give them something that, that they're lacking or you know being consistent with them and giving more than what they're what they're going to give you and if you do this for a while i'm telling you you're going to win at the end so hopefully i was able to answer your question so if you're trying to intrigue a group right uh, in a conversation so you're with a group of people you're conversing with them you're trying to get their attention right 
this is gonna sound something like it's crazy like this is something you're probably gonna least expect but get interested in what they have to and what they have to say simple legitly get interested in their lives and their hobbies what they are doing lately and ask them a lot of question a lot of questions like if they're into let's say uh carpeting or they're into pl well th these are jobs actually or they're into drawing or anime or web design and stuff like that say so, and just get interested in them and have the whole group interested in what this person has to offer so let's say someone's talking about i'm really into web design i'm good at making short films say really short film that's very interesting what what was your latest project and what was your sh last short film about because i think myself and everyone here will you know we would like to know what what you're doing we would also love to see maybe a little clip of it so then now this person is is like like wow he's interested in me and you mentioned the whole group so now by default most of the people in the group they're going to get interested in this person because you added them into your question so they're going to be listening now to what this person has to say right and then you can do one person for a while and then you can go to another person and another person and during these conversations you know you can throw in some jokes you can throw in some very intellectual smart observations that you have of their personality or maybe if they show you something you can say a very again intellectual smart comment about their works like if someone showed you a drawing or a painting you can say you know by looking at your painting or your drawing i'm getting the feeling that the message you're really trying to portray here is this this is and this right you're giving your opinion and a very smart opinion so you're interested in other people you're getting people involved in what they're interested in then you keep changing to other people's interest and you're adding your own intellectual smart intelligent opinions and what you're feeling when you listen to them people usually don't go through this experience you do this isad i'm telling you you're going to kill it people are going to be interested in you later on and they're going to want to be your friends and everyone will be intrigued so they was able to answer your question isad follow me on my podcast that's the link down there check it out please send me your comments tell your friends to follow me we really appreciate it i'm trying to put as much content out there for you guys completely free i don't want your money i just want to give as much value and build more brand awareness yes thank you um what's the basic things i need to know about body language in order to have more positive influence wow that is a great question bro thank you so much thank you i appreciate it the interdisciplinary chemist thank you and i'm glad i was able to answer your question zero zero seven point andy i'm glad so in order so some basic things that you got to know about body language to have more positive influence so first of all, I would tell you to first check out my YouTube channel, which is Conversation Guru. I have some videos on body language. I will be doing more videos on body language in the future. So uh, definitely check out those videos on my YouTube. And please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, 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 please to my YouTube channel. I would really appreciate it. Okay. So always have in mind that you need to have open body language. This is something extremely basic. Like don't be folding your arms. Don't cross your legs smile more it's basic stuff like that because believe it or not if you ha always have a lot of negative body language people subconsciously will start to judge you they don't know why they're judging you they don't know why they're thinking so many negative things but it's because your body language right is so negative people are not realizing but subconsciously they're realizing it and they're judging for you for it and they're pushing you far away it's all about body language tonality and your language right but language is third tonality a second body language is counts more than 50 percent of your communication about 55 percent so make sure that your body language is positive and study more about the body language science you know right when you're when you're networking when you're having a conversation with uh maybe different genders or in a very um uh work related uh, environment put the right body language smile more more eye contact don't be creepy more positive body language i'm telling you it's gonna help you tremendously and open up your posture more so you can have more confidence and people can project people love confidence you project more confidence and people will feel more attracted to you you know work wise uh you'll have more influence over them okay hopefully i was able to answer your question all right guys one more question and then I'm how can you have more patience That's a phenomenal question. And there's so many different sources that can teach you how to more, have more patience online and in books. But what's truly have helped me to, have, to gain more patience, right, is just 
I like to hang out with people who I know are very patient, learn more about their psyche, how they think, and how they've got to have more patience. And when you have more patience, by default, you have more influence. You're more positive. You have more influence over people. You're seen as an example. And think, if you don't have patience in the future, when you want people to have patience with you, people will not have patience with you. What goes around comes around. So think about it. If you're not patient with people, people are not going to be patient with you, especially the times where you need it. They're not. It's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen, and then you're going to suffer, and you're going to think back, if I, sh- I, could, I should have had more, more patience. It's really about being self-aware. When those moments come that you're getting angry or you're, you're losing your patience, you need to like tone it down a little bit. A great tip is to, it's to count from, from 1 to 10, but backwards. 10 to 1 backwards it will calm you down and say, listen, I need to have more patience for this person or for this situation. It's going to help me in the long run. I want to be better. I want to gain this quality. I want to have more patience. Learn the information through research, through books, through videos, through top authorities. Learn it. Learn different techniques. And then apply it in those hardest times. When you need the patience, relax yourself. Count from 10 to 1. Tell yourself, I need to be self-aware that I need more patience for these reasons. Because what goes around comes around. Do this formula, and I'm telling you, in time, you will build more patience, and it will go great for you. All right, guys, I really appreciate it. Hopefully, Isad was able to answer your question. Guys, have a great night. Thank you so much. Please follow me, like my stuff, follow my podcast, and subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube. Guys, thank you guys so much, and of course, till next time.